Hello everyone, Palitum here. Welcome back to Path of Exile. We are at the precipice of a new league. The Breach League has just started. Uh, again, I've played a lot of Diablo before. I know a lot of my audience is used to Diablo. So just the, the new league is basically a new season that's starting in Path of Exile right now. And with the new league, we do have some new mechanics. There are breaches located around various maps that we can activate and kind of peek into an alternate reality where, of course, enemies are going to be flooding into us. And we're trying to kill as many of those enemies as possible and get some pretty good loot along the way. I've been having a lot of fun in the new league so far. I think as of right now, we're only two days in. I took Saturday off to just kind of play video games for my own enjoyment, and I got through the normal difficulty in Path of Exile. Enjoyed it quite a bit. Actually took my time, did all the side quests, looked around for breaches. It was a totally different experience trying not to rush to the end of the game like I did on my Spark Scion. Now, this is my League Starter build. It is the Lazy Paladin. This is another guide that I found online. And I mentioned in the Scion video that I wanted to do a, a build that I come up with on my own, and then a guide build, and then a, a build of my own again, and keep this repeating until I have a pretty good understanding of the game. And between this character and the last one, I did mess around with a uh, Essence Drain Contagion character trying to figure out how that works, the nuances of that, and I learned a fair bit, but this is the character that we're gonna be focusing on for a while. This is the Lazy Paladin. And the idea of this character is that it is insanely easy to play. If you're new to the game, if you saw the, the Breach League advertisement on Steam because it just started and Path of Exiles piqued your interest, then this is probably a good build to start with if you wanted just a really, really safe, tanky, survivable build. And it's lived up to that promise so far. I am on Cruel Difficulty, just finished off Normal Difficulty, and I've only died twice. One of those is because I went AFK, and the other is because I walked through a trap in a lair for way too long. Wait, oh, I walked, I like traveled with the trap the whole way, and it just cut me to pieces. So bosses haven't been any trouble at all, and I know it's only the Normal Difficulty, so. Uh, I'm very much aware that the game gets significantly harder, but I have really high hopes here. And over the course of the next few videos, we will be tracking the progress of this particular character. Uh, basically how the setup works right now is I'm using a new attack. This is Blade Flurry. This was added into the game shortly before the Breach League was uh, officially launched. And the cool thing about this build is you can kind of use any attacking ability, but Blade Flurry is just something I wanted to experiment with because it was new. Let me show you how it works just a little bit. We're not going to be going against super hard enemies or anything. But essentially, if you take a look at the top of the screen, you can see the buffs that I have. And when we right click to use Blade Flurry, we're going to be generating stacks of this. And when we get to six, that means the ability is at full charge. And then we can release the right click and it deals AOE damage to basically everything in a very close proximity. This allows you to play a character that usually would be focused on melee and give you a little bit more range than you would have otherwise making it so you still can jump right in and try to do as much damage as humanly possible as close to a target, or you can actually skirt around dangers that a boss fight may have and survive a little bit more than a, maybe a purely melee character would be able to do. Also keep in mind, it does fantastic damage, so it's kind of like the best of both worlds. Uh, Blade Flurry seems to be really, really good. Uh, but like I said, the, the great thing about this particular build is you can kind of just fit in whatever attacking gem you particularly like. I've used Molten Strike while I was leveling a little bit. Glacier Hammer was an option that we could have done. And Static static Strike, excuse me, I actually got a lot of mileage out of, and it's what I used up until the point that I was trying to trade other players for that Blade Flurry. Now this is a Templar character and they actually don't have access to that gem naturally. You are gonna have to either level up another class or just look in trade chat, look on poe.trade and try to get that ability from someone else. I am supporting this Blade Flurry with the melee physical damage support, weapon elemental damage support, and added fire damage support. Uh, we are running an on hit curse setup with just one curse. So basically, 
the beauty of this this particular build is the fact that you basically only have two things you're going to be casting on a regular basis. And we have our Blade Flurry, which is our main attack. This is my right click. And we also have our movement ability, which is our shield charge. And I'll talk more about that in a second. But the idea is that all of these passive effects will just be helping you deal damage and helping you survive encounters without adding any complexity to the actual gameplay of the character, which is really, really strong as you could possibly imagine. Uh, so we are running a curse on hit setup. So whenever we deal damage with vengeance or reckoning, which are these passive kind of counterattack abilities, for instance, with reckoning, um, is this the one? Yeah, when we block with our shield, we essentially just do a cone attack in a direction. Let me see if I can show you an example of that. Yeah, so if, if we just chill out right here, you'll notice these uh, shields keep popping out in directions of enemies if we do block them, or we'll just deal damage with a sword that kind of comes up around us. We also have some more effects coming into play here, obviously, as well. But essentially, we don't have to do anything extra to get these to proc. They just kind of naturally proc through combat. And I'm able to kill enemies just by standing still, in some cases, as you can see here, which is kind of rewarding for me, but I could also see how other players would find that a little boring. But with those passive effects, with these counterattacks, we are using a curse on hit gem to apply Enfeeble, which is just going to be debuffing everything that we curse, reducing the damage that they can deal, and thus increasing our survivability along the way. Uh, I am running a Blood Rage, which is a buff we were using on the Scion as well. What Blood Rage allows me to do is have a chance to get a Frenzy Charge if we kill an enemy. And these Frenzy Charges are going to be increasing our attack speed, which means we basically just do everything in our build better than we would have done otherwise. And as long as you're killing things pretty actively, as long as there's not very much downtime, which with this particular build, there is not, uh, you'll be able to keep that buff up all the time and you should be able to keep frenzy charges up for the majority of your playing time as well, which is which is pretty convenient. Uh, we are using a hatred aura in here somewhere. This is just to increase our physical damage because physical damage is what we're trying to exploit here. We're trying to get as much of that as we can while also being very, very tanky. Uh, on our boots, I am using a Tempest Shield, Cast Wind Damage Taken, Molten Shell, and Summon Chaos Golem. But what does that mean? Well, we have our Cast Wind Damage Taken support gem here, and we're keeping it at a very low level. We do not want to level this up. Uh, I got this one at level two, and I may drop it down a little bit uh, to level one. Uh, if I feel the need to do so. But essentially, the more you level cast when damage taken, the more damage it's going to take to proc this gym, which in most cases is not what you're going to be looking for. So the lower level on that, the better. But every time I take, uh, what is it, 583 damage at this level, we are going to be causing a reaction. You may have noticed earlier that my shield started glowing with electricity and I had a, I had more shields of fire around my character. Well, that was because of two passive effects. Tempest Shield, which just helps us deal damage to stuff and uh, does a little bit to increase our block chance. And then Molten Shell, which you can see on my character right now, which if we take enough damage will explode and deal damage to everything around me. Again, not really adding any complexity to the play style of the character, also increasing our defenses and increasing our AOE damage potential, which of course is really, really good. We're using the Summon Chaos Golem just for a little bit more physical damage mitigation. Although I don't think this is required. We could certainly use another Golem if we wanted to. Uh, and then in my gloves, we're just using a Shield Charge and a Fortify Support. Now, I also would want to get a Faster Attacks link on here, but unfortunately, I don't have a green socket connected on my gloves right now. But the Shield Charge, what we want it to do is be our main version of mobility, our main way to get around the map. But we can also use this in combat to dodge attacks. So um, let's say this was a boss. Oh no, he's gonna do this really uh, telegraphed attack that we can get out of the way of. We can move around and then charge into him and we gain this fortify buff, which reduces the damage we take when we get hit. So yet another way of really passively, really naturally and Oh, I, what's the word I'm looking for? Really intuitive, there we go. Really intuitive way of getting even more survivability in our build. 
while not adding any complexity to it. Because you would want to have a mobility spell anyway, you might as well have one that gives you fortify and allows you to travel without having a target, which some other um, mobility skills in the game do require you to kind of lock onto something to move. So that's the build so far. Again, it's been working out really, really well for me. If you want to read more about potential skill setups, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, in the video description, I will link to the guide. Again, this is not my own design. This one is actually really, really well thought out, and I really like it. And if you guys are looking to jump into the game, this could be a great build to start out with. You do run into some complications with, like, weapon crafting, because about every five levels, you want to make sure you're getting a new weapon, a new weapon with good physical damage rolls and ideally attack speed on it as well. So uh, there's a little bit of a learning curve with that, but that's a video we can do another time. If we go ahead and take a look at our passive tree, you can see I just left the Templar area here. I went for a Sanctity immediately and then just went straight down. We grabbed Born to Fight, Strong Arm, and then Solidity. I nailed that. Holy crap. Then we worked our way back up a little bit and started working towards, I believe this is the Duelist tree, getting these health nodes, making our way across and then down. Uh, inevitably trying to make our way down over here to Defiance because we're trying to get, get basically every shield passive that we can possibly get. Eventually, I'm going to be making my way down here, just uh, south of that Defiance node. Uh, but right now, since I just made the jump up to Cruel Difficulty, I did make my way to the left here a little bit, and we are going to be picking up the Sanctuary talent, which is going to uh, increase our elemental resistances. Uh, as you move up in difficulties, it does lower your passive resistances, so uh, always having those in mind, always keeping those in mind, and always trying to build to protect yourself from that elemental damage is really important. And I might actually pick up this talent here as well, Diamond Skin, just for more elemental resistance as well. Uh, but that's about it, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Again, we'll be progressing with this character quite a bit as we go into the harder difficulties. This is my league starter. This is the one I'm going to be playing a lot to get currency and better gear. And this is the character I'm also going to be venturing into maps with as well. So we're going to be seeing the Paladin quite a bit. I actually gave him my namesake, too. This is MF Pally time. We're dedicated. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and we'll be back with more Path of Exiles and other gaming content here on the channel very soon.